Doris, I know that actually the, the idea of a palimpsest is a very good description of your career, that different works um, overlap in theme and idea, but I wonder if, if there is a, a starting point in your mind for palimpsest, if you're aware of a moment when the idea became tangible. That is always difficult for me to define that precise moment. I never, I'm never certain of that. Um, I, I am studying the testimonies, I'm reading, I'm drawing, I'm working, and all of a sudden, uh, as I, 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 do many, I do many sketches. Um, they sketch quite fast, and then there is one idea that sort of, that I cannot move out of it, that I get stuck in that. And, and that's the point when I know I cannot go any farther, that I have to explore that. That, that, that image I had of the, of the earth crying these names because we are unable to mourn collectively. What was your initial contact with the, with the, the European uh, migrant crisis? Was it through the Western media? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> what is amazing is that, that if, you, if you're willing to know, there is a lot of information in mainstream media. But, but not really names, it's often images or the broad issue about the numbers or the volume or the problem or how one deals with it. Yes, but usually there is, you can find one or two names in, I mean if you read ten articles you can find one or two names. If you really cover as I was doing like the British press, Spanish press, uh, German press. Um, uh, we were really Syrian press at the time. It was quite active. Uh, Turkish press. We were reading a lot of press. So, so we found names. We found many names. Uh, and sometimes stories attached to those names. And those names that had, that had a story and uh, uh, were the ones that, that we start working on researching more deeply. I suppose a lot of your work in the past has dealt very intensely with individual lives lived and lost, but often they're not named, so the anonymity plays out. Why did you decide with this piece to be so specific? I always, I always thought it was very important not to, not to present uh, the particularity of a victim. I used to think that, that it was essential um, to research on one particular case, but then when I was working, I wanted to present a more neutral, more open image of, this, of, that, of that extreme life experience in order for more people to be able to be touched by that experience, to, to make it more universal in a way. Then when I was doing this research, I encountered mothers who were mourning their sons and daughters, and it was essential for them. I mean, the, the, the pain was so absolutely specific. It had to be the name. It had to be just one single uh, person. It had to be the particularity of a life. So I, I couldn't move out of that, and then I, I, I realized I had to contradict myself. What I had been doing um, was not something given. It had, it had to be changed. And the idea of water, given that many migrants are drowned and that's part of the story, I suppose that's one motivation. What about the idea of weeping? Because the names themselves seem to weep. I think weeping was the main idea because I was, as I was interviewing these mothers, weeping was, of course, always present. And as I went away to my studio to work on these, uh, uh, on these interviews, um, again, weeping was present all the time. Um, it, is, it was understanding the idea that mourning is something you don't overcome. It's something you have to live with. And, and all these lost lives and all this violence that we experience is something we have to live with. It's something that is part of our experience. And of course, defines the life of the mourner. So somehow they, they create this this method or this way of, of, of traversing the day somehow with difficulty. But 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 the presence of the of the of the pain is there. 
The absence has marked every single moment of their lives. So weeping that was essential because it's always there. And, and since we are unable to, to mourn, I thought that, that the very earth had to cry this name. It's very interesting that when you do lose someone close to you, well-meaning people often say, oh, you'll get over it. And it seems to me that grief, one of the things is you don't ever fully get over the loss of someone close to you. Maybe you learn different ways of dealing with it. But it is also interesting about the idea of how society focuses obsessively on the loss of someone and then very quickly forgets. And I suppose that idea of, of, of memorial and loss has been central to your work. Yes, yes, yes. Loss, there are loss, many, many different losses. Um, of course, the more intense ones is the, the love of, of, of a loved person. But in the case of, of all kinds of violence, like torture or, or sexual violence, it's a loss of your, of your previous self, of whoever you were before that event. So there are many losses that we completely disregard. So the important thing for me in this piece is to capture the way our memory functions, the way we tend to forget, the way the latest uh, tragedy erases the previous one. So. This way, this piece, in a way, memorializes this loss, but at the same time, and that is because, and that's why it's a palimpsest, it erases the previous pain. And then the more recent one is the one that comes to your eyes stronger. <laughs>